In this video, we will use TSLint and we will create a custom lint rule to ban import statements, which is just a facetious example. You wouldn't do this in a real app. This is just an example of an arbitrary rule that we're going to place on the code. So if any developers violate this rule, it's going to mark it red in their editor and it's going to give them helpful messages when they hover over those errors or look in their terminal. So to start, let's create a folder where we're going to put our lint rules. I'll call that lint. And in here, I'll create a file. And rule identifiers are always kebab cased. And the rule files must always be camel cased. So this is going to be no import rule.ts and the file must always contain the suffix rule so if you wanted a rule called my rule that would be a bad name because it would be like my rule rule uh, so we're just going to say no import rule and I'll just copy this here from the example on uh, the TSLint website under uh, develop and then custom rules and paste that in and these need to be alphabetized here for our project because of another lint rule. Uh, so this rule is going to say import statement forbidden. And let's see, this project also has a lint rule about max classes per file. So we could turn that off if we don't find that helpful by opening tslint.json and say rules. And we'll say max classes per file false because we don't want that rule and that error goes away so what this is going to basically do is it's going to walk our code so we go here to the AST Explorer website uh, we need to switch the language here from acorn parser to typescript parser If you paste the code in here, you can hover over each of these pieces of code and see what that is. So this is an identifier, the React DOM in this whole import statement. So if we click this, that's actually not an import statement, but it's an import declaration. And we can see here it's made up of an import clause, a module specifier, and it has things like leading comments and trailing comments, which in this case are undefined. You can hover over this or click on these and see, okay, that's an identifier. That is an expression identifier. That's part of an import declaration. So these pieces of the code have names. This is a string literal. If you look at the structure, we see it's in a property access expression which is this document dot get element by ID that's a property access expression there's even one for the end of the file so this provides the structure you can use to write code that works on code so this no import rule is a class that extends the TSLint abstract rule it has a message import statement is forbidden which is going to be the message that is shown if this rule is failed and it applies or it provides a apply method which takes in a source file which is a AST or an abstract syntax tree and it returns an array of rule failures which are objects that identify to TSLint where the failures occurred in this file and then it applies with walker and passes in the no imports walker which is this class and what this does is allows you to create a method visit import declaration so this one will get called for every import declaration here in the abstract syntax tree so when it gets called with this that's not an import declaration so this method will never receive this 
AST node, it'll only receive these AST nodes. They've already been filtered to some degree. So for each of the import declarations in the file that's being walked, we're going to get the AST node, the abstract syntax tree node. And because this is a no import rule, we're banning import statements, we're just going to take any of these and consider them failures. So we're going to say add failure at and we're going to pass in a failure which we create with this dot create failure and we need to pass in the start and end of where the failure is as far as the position of the characters go so we do node dot get start and node dot get width and then we pass in a message which in this case is the failure string and uh, basically that's it so if you wanted to filter these further, let's say you only want to ban importing React for some reason, you don't want developers importing React. You see this import st import declaration has a module specifier where it's a string literal and the text is React. So that would be one way to do this. So you could say if node dot module specifier dot get text is equal to react then that's a failure so in this example we're not banning imports we're just banning imports f that target react as their module specifier so for every import statement here in the abstract syntax tree it's going to come in here and it's going to check if the module specifier text is react and if so that's going to fail the rule so here in the documentation under usage and then configuration if you scroll down you can see there's a rules directory so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to our tslint.json we're going to say rules directory and we're going to pass in the lint folder because that's where our rule is, our custom rule that we just wrote right here. And under rules, we're going to turn our rule on. So we're going to say no import true. And one last step is we need to open a terminal here and cd into the lint directory. And we need to do npx tsc no import rule to compile that down to javascript and we're getting some errors here and it's suggesting that we run it with lib es 2015 and we still get an error here uh, that something in the node modules this react dom typings provided by the definitely typed library uh, is producing some kind of type error uh, when compiled under these options because when you compile TypeScript will check the whole code base for errors for type errors and it will always output the JavaScript um, with the default options so despite that error we see no import rule dot js was created so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload VS Code because the linter sometimes needs to be restarted. And uh, let's see here. If we go to the command palette and we go tslint show output, we can see that the linter is running. And it's not doing what we expect. We want there to be some kind of an error but there is not so let's debug that so if we go here and copy this and console.log and then go to the terminal and cd into the lint directory and do our compile command
and let's reload VS Code and show the lint output. We see the strings getting logged here as the linter runs on various files. So it looks like the quotes are actually part of the string here. So we would actually need to surround this in a literal here so that it includes the quotes. And we can go ahead and remove this console.log and let's just reload the window here to force the linter to restart. And we need to go into the terminal and recompile the rule. And then reload the window. And if we show the lint output here, we see the linter is running. There's no errors. And in the code, the lint rule is detecting that this fails the lint rule we created, import statement forbidden. Um, in this case, we changed it to not ban all import statements, but only import statements where the module specifier text is React.